Okay, so this lecture will be focused on local compactness. Okay, so here's the definition. So x being locally compact means that for any point, there has a compact subspace such that if there is a neighborhood that contains x that lies in the compact subspace. Okay, so here's some examples. So r is locally compact, right? Because any x, it must be lies in the open interval. Then you would lies in the closed interval, which is a compact subspace. But Q is not locally compact. Why? Because first we show that zero has no neighborhood in any compact set. So suppose for a contradiction that well there is some open set. Right, so zero is in U subset of K subset of Q. So U is open and Q K is compact subspace of Q. Well if zero is in the open set, which means that there exists epsilon such that is in some basis element, right? Some basis element. Now, since we have this element lies in some compact um, subspace, right? And K is closed, right? Because Q is Hausdorff, right? Subspace of Hausdorff space is closed, right? If you view Q as a subspace of R, right? Then um, compact uh, subspace of Hausdorff space is closed, which means that it contains the limit point, right? Which means that you can make this closed interval lies in K. Okay, so with that being said, K is compact, which means that this set is also compact because they're closed, right? They're closed in Q. Okay, so we have this is compact, but the contradiction um, appears by we by the fact that it is not sequentially compact. Okay, we're in the metric space. So recall from last lecture, right? So you can pick an alpha, right, in this neighborhood, but an irrational. Then we know that there exists a sequence in this interval and rational sequence that converges to this irrational point. But all the subsequence converges to alpha, right? Given that the sequence converging to this, then all the subsequence also converges to the same limit. But this limit is outside of Q, right? The limit is not in Q, it's not in the space we discussed. So and that with that being said, in the topology Q, we have found a sequence that has no converging subsequence, right? That does not converge in our space, Q. So here's a, a contradiction. So in topology, I, we study two important spaces. One is the metrizable space, and one is compact Hausdorff space. And in fact, the set R is metrizable. It is, okay, closed interval. It is metrizable, it's compact, and it's Hausdorff. Okay. All right, so here's the theorem. So X be a space. So here's some equivalence of being locally compact. So X is locally compact Hausdorff. If only if we have a space Y satisfying one to three. So it contains X as a subspace and the set consists of a single point and Y is compact Hausdorff. So provide that uh, the equivalence is X is locally compact Hausdorff and Y is compact Hausdorff. Okay, and it's unique up to a homeomorphism. If y and y prime are two spaces satisfying these conditions, then we know that there has there is a homeomorphism that equals to identity map on x. Okay, so first we verify the uniqueness. If y and y prime have the property one two three, we define a h to be the map that it maps the point p to q, where p and q are the extra point. Okay, the single point, and it is an identity map on x. So we show that if u is open to y, h u is open to 1 prime. Then the symmetry symmetry gives that h is a homeomorphism. So first, we pick an uh, open set. So let p was at the point not in q, then h u is equal to u, which means that u, u is subset of x, is subset of y, right? Which means that u intersect x is, is open in x. Okay, so u is open in x, right? But 
y prime minus x is a single point, but y prime is Hausdorff. Remember that a single point finite set and Hausdorff space is closed, right? Which means that this play this is closed, which means that x is open at y prime. So if u is open at x, x is open at y prime, then u is open at y prime. Now for p in q. If p is in q, we let c be a complement of u and y. Well, we know that it's closed in y, so it's a compact subspace. You're in x, so you're a compact subspace of x. And x is a subspace of y prime, so you're a compact subspace of y prime. y prime is Hausdorff. C is closed in y prime, right? Because you're compact. Which and we also have h u is equal to y prime minus c, which is open and y prime. Okay, so to see this, so here's a diagram. So here's y. Here's the extra point p, and the space x in the neighborhood u. Okay, so h of u. Um, so suppose that u is those points, and this point, and maps to this point, and this point. Right. Well, this point. Uh, this set is y prime so what is c c is y minus u so c is actually this region right and h prime of u maps to this set right but c this is c right this is c so y prime Subtract those points gives you those, right? Which is exactly H U, so it's open in Y prime because C is closed in Y prime, so H U is open in Y. Okay, so we have verified the uniqueness. So now we start prove our theorem. So we start with being locally compact. Then we show that there exists a space having one, two, three, three conditions. So first. We pick an element not an x and we adjoin it to y and then we topologize this space y so there are two types of open sets first are the open sets u and x second are the set of all y minus c where c is a compact subspace of x so here we verify it is a topology empty set is of type one yeah and y is of type two because y is equal to y minus empty set where empty set is compact okay Okay, and we check the intersection. This is a type one. This is a type two. And this is equal to this, which is again a type one, right? Because C is what compact subspace of X. Okay, and we know that X is Hausdorff. So compact subspace of Hausdorff space is closed, which means that this is open, right? So it's again a type one. Right, oh, it says open in X, and we check unions. Well, we can just see that. Oh, the, of course, type ones, all the types twos, right? The Morgan's law I'll give you this. Well, this is arbitrary in the section of closed sets, which is again closed. There's your open set type two, and these right set theory, right? We use the fact that C minus U is closed, which is C minus U is compact. In, the, in compact C. Now we check that X is subspace of Y. So if U is type 1, U intersect X and U is in open in X. Okay, so open the Y, you open. The intersecting X gives you an open set in X. And for this open set of Y, we intersect X gives you this. Well, X is Hausdorff, C is compact, so um, C is closed, which means that this set is open in X. Okay? So given open sets of y, intersect with x, gives you open set of x. Again, we're going to check that for open set of x, there exists open set of y such that it is the intersection of the set and x. Okay, so for this u open in x, u is equal to u intersect x, where u is open in y. Okay, so I marked a little bit, although they are the same set, but a different color, so that you can see it more clearly. Right? Now, we show that y is compact. Well, for any cover, we must contain some 
open set like this because the this is not covered in any point of type one, right? So for all the member, we intersect it with X. Then they covered this compact subspace C, which means that we pass to a finite collection and we are joined with minus C, then this covers Y. Okay? So Y is compact. And we showed that Y is Hausdorff. Now for any X not equal to Y. If they're both an X, then it's trivial. If one is an X, one is an uh, extra point. We had, since we know that we finally use the fact that X is locally compact. Okay, so we pick in C and X. And X and U and C. Well, because X is in U and C, and infinite is in, I mean, the extra point is in Y minus C. Okay. Which means that U intersect Y minus C gives you an empty set. This is a neighborhood, right? a neighborhood open set that contains this point. And they're disjoint. Okay. So it true prove the converse. If we have a space Y satisfying these condition, we show that X is locally compact Hausdorff. Okay. Well, Hausdorff need we don't have to prove it anymore because Hausdorff a subspace of a Hausdorff space is a Hausdorff. And for X and X, we pick U and V to be this joint. Okay. So this is the point, this is the point and the extra point. Okay, we pick because Y Hausdorff. So we pick two disjoint um neighborhood. Now Y minus V is close in Y. Right? Because this is open in Y, so it's closed in Y. Now Y is compact means that Y minus V is a compact subspace of Y because they're closed. Closed, so the compact is compact. And also we have that y minus v is contained in x, so your compact subspace of x. And u and v are disjoint. Gives you that u is lies entirely in y minus v. Okay. So here we prove that x is locally compact because, because for x, we have picked a y minus v compact subspace where U is contained in it, right? Contained in a neighborhood. Okay. So here's a note. So if Y X is compact, the space Y is not interesting because Y minus X just is of type two. Alright, so a joint isolated point X. Now if X is not compact, then the point is in the limit point of X, which means that the closure of X is equal to Y. Why? Because for any this neighborhood of the extra point, since we know that X is not compact, so C is a proper subset of X because C is a compact subspace, but X is not compact, so there must be a proper subset. So if this is a proper subset, which means that this point you took away this is not empty and must contain a point X and C. Okay? So which gives that, which shows that this point is a lemma point of x, which means that the closure of x is equal to y. So this leads to a new definition. So if y is a compact Hausdorff, x is a proper subspace with its closure equal to y, then we say y is a compactification of x. If y minus x gives you only a single point as we did before, it's called a one point compactification of x. So X has a one point compactification if and only if you're a locally compact Hausdorff and not being compact. Okay. And here we have other formulation of local compactness. So if the Hausdorff space locally compact if and only if for X and X and a neighborhood U of X, there's a neighborhood V of X such that it is compact and contains N U. Its closure is compact. Okay, so this is more like a local uh, behavior. So for this direction, it's obvious, right? Because for this direction, um, given u, there's a point v such that 
V prime is compact and V prime is good. So we don't really need a J U. Right? Give it X. There's a neighborhood V of X such that this is compact. Right. If your neighborhood then it contains a basis that is contained in V. Yeah, a basis element that is contained in V that contains X and that lies in V. Yeah, you know, and the, we, we already know that L is compact, right? Do we have a basis element? V, right? And this is compact. Right? So this is uh, basically the local compactness. Okay, so for this direction, we want to show that, well, if you're locally compact, then you have, like, given this and given this, exists this, such that, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So we let X and X, U be a neighborhood. Then we let Y be a one-point compactification that exists. And we let C equal to Y minus U. Right? Close, compact. And by lemma 26.4 in the book, we pick V, W, open Y, disjoint such that this contains X and this contains C. Then we know that V bar is compact. Okay. Because uh, Y is Hausdorff. Here closed, subspace of a Hausdorff space is compact. And V lies in this because they're disjoint with W. Right? They're disjoint. Which means that V bar is in this bar, which is this, because this is closed, which is so this is a Y minus C. We got this. Okay? As desired. This is what we want. Okay. And we have one more corollary is that like your locally compact Hausdorff. Then for any subspace. If you're closed or open subspace, then you're locally compact. Okay? Not arbitrary subspace. We require this subspace to be open or closed. Okay? So we discuss by casework. If A is closed, we get bigger point at A. C is compact. Such that we use the local compactness of X. Now C intersect A is closed and C. So a compact subset of C, or your compact subset of A, it doesn't matter, just because you're taking intersection, right? Your are closing C. C is compact, well, X is Hausdorff, right? So C is also uh, closed, right? So it, commu it commutes. Now we know that, well, X is in U intersect A, because X is A, X is U, so I think it's A. But there's a subset of C intersect A because, right, you have a subset of C. No, this is open in A, right? So we're done. It is locally compact because uh, for A, X and A, we have found um, C intersect A is compact in A. And this is open in A and they write of X. And if A is open, then by above theorem, we just let so this theorem, like this theorem. We let the A equal to U, right? Here the, the equivalence of being locally compact. If only if given neighborhood U of X. So if A is open, this we just replace this U by A. Blah blah blah, is V V compact, blah blah blah. Okay, so that, that, this really just finishes the topic in locally compact, okay? Thank you guys.